Jesus washed his disciples' feet in preparation for sharing the Last Supper. Before we read on in the story, before we too taste food and drink, we pause to pray and recommit ourselves to the service of others. Lord God, as we reflect on the richness of your table, we cannot forget the rawness of the earth. We cannot take bread and forget those who are hungry. Your world is one world, and we are stewards of its nourishment. Lord, put our prosperity at the service of the poor. We cannot take wine and forget those who are thirsty, the ground and the rootless. The earth and its weary people cry out for justice. Lord, put our fullness at the service of the empty. We cannot hear your words of peace and forget the world at war, or if not at war, then preparing for it. Show us quickly, Lord, how to turn weapons into welcome signs and the lust for power into a desire for peace. We cannot remember the feast of your family and forget our divisions. We are one in spirit, but not in fact. History and hurt still dismember us. Lord, heal your church in every brokenness. Amen. And now we come to recall together the Last Supper. In these times of coronavirus, then we cannot share in communion together, but we can listen to Jesus's words and we can eat bread and wine or whatever food and drink you have before you as we recall his story. This may not be the communion that we would have shared this night under other circumstances, but it is a reminder that God continually invites us to take up our place in his great story. So as we watch the story, we invite you to eat and drink at the relevant points. But first, let's pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. We worship you, the creator who breathed the universe into life. We follow you, Jesus Christ, who came to deliver us from the powers of darkness. We open ourselves to you, Holy Spirit, as we and all creation await the coming of God's kingdom of justice and joy. Jesus sat down with the, the twelve and they ate their dinner. I tell you this, one of you here will betray me. The disciples of course were horrified. Not me. Is it? It's not me master, is it? It's the one who shared this dish of food with me. That's the one who will betray me. Just as our sacred scripture has taught, the Son of Man is on his way. But there will be nothing but misery for he who hands him over. That man will wish he had never been born. At that, Judas, who was indeed planning to betray him, said, It's not me, Master, is it? I believe you've just answered your own question. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread. He offered a blessing over it, and then he broke it and gave it to his disciples. Take this and eat. It is my body. And then he took a cup of wine. He made a blessing over it, and he passed it around the table. Take this and drink, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I tell you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine again until I am with you once more, drinking in the kingdom of my Father. The meal concluded. Together, 
all the men sang a hymn of praise and thanksgiving, and they took a late evening walk to the Mount of Olives. We don't know what songs of praise the disciples sang, but perhaps it was one of the Psalms. With your candles shining brightly before, why not join us in this ancient song of praise written by David and recorded as Psalm 145 in the Bible? I will lift my praise above everything to you, my God and King. I will continually bless your name for ever and always. My praise will never cease. I will praise you every day. I will lift up your name for ever. The Eternal is great and deserves endless praise. His greatness knows no limit, recognises no boundary. No one can measure or comprehend his magnificence. One generation after another will celebrate your great works. They will pass on the story of your powerful acts to their children. Your majesty and glorious splendour have captivated me. I will meditate on your wonders, sing songs of your worth. We confess there is nothing greater than you, God, nothing mightier than your awesome works. I will tell of your greatness as long as I have breath. The news of your rich goodness is no secret. Your people love to recall it and sing songs of joy to celebrate your righteousness. The Eternal is gracious. He shows mercy to his people. For him anger does not come easily, but faithful love does and it is rich and abundant. But the Eternal's goodness is not exclusive. It is offered freely to all. His mercy extends to all his creation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I wonder if the songs of praise sung by the disciples lifted their spirits on that strange evening. I wonder how they felt as they left the coziness of the upper room and headed out into the darkness of night. I wonder if they noticed Jesus getting more and more sombre, even as they struggled to stay awake. In recognition of this darkening atmosphere, in many churches our practice this night would have been to strip the church, to remove from it all decoration, the brass, the silver, the hangings, the candle. The church would then stay bare and empty. Decorated tomorrow perhaps with just a stark wooden cross, but left bare until the transformation of Easter Sunday. And there may be objects in your home that you similarly want to hide away tonight until Sunday. But for now, we will mark the same ritual with our candles. After we've heard the Bible story, then Jan and I will lead you in sharing in Psalm 22, the lament that Jesus would later pray on the cross. And we invite you to join us as slowly we extinguish our candles. And as we lament, we will have an opportunity to listen to Jan playing a haunting lament on the oboe. And then at the end, without further speech, we will end this service together and leave the uncertainty hanging. And tomorrow on Good Friday at 12 noon, 
we invite you to join us in watching how the story unfolds in the final part of our passion play, which will stream on Facebook and YouTube. But as we prepare for this final section, let's join in with the church's prayer for this day. God, our Father, your Son Jesus Christ was obedient to the end and drank the cup prepared for him. May we watch with him through the night of suffering and be faithful. Amen. 